In this video, we'll be talking about uh, measurements, error, and statistical treatment of data. Throughout this lab, uh, you'll be collecting measurements and we'll need to process and analyze the data and present any error that's associated with the measurement. So there's certain error that we will come across in lab that we can control and some error that we cannot control. Um, but as long as we um, report the error that we know about, um, we can be sure that others will be able to re reproduce our results. Um, so there's always a, a certain random error that will be in any measurement. Um, and this is something that it, you will always have random error and you cannot correct for that. The error that we want to look out for is systematic error. And this is a kind of flaw in the experiment or the equipment. And this kind of error is reproducible. And so if I take this measurement multiple times and I'm always off by so much, then I can correct for that. And we'll see that um, in your next project when you calibrate glassware, we're really um, accounting for that systemic error, uh, systematic error. So for instance, if your 10 mil pipette doesn't uh, dispense exactly 10 mils, it might dispense 9.98 mils, then you know that and you can correct for that. And so then in your calculations, you hopefully will get a more um, accurate value. Um, we'll throw around precision and accuracy um, a lot, um, and for measurement lab, these are uh, skills that we want you to learn. Uh, it's, uh, it's certainly a skill to be able to perform precise measurements, um, and so that's why in some of your first experiments, you'll have to weigh sand several times to see if you can get a reproducible um, result there. So precision has to do with the reproducibility of our measurements. So again, if I weigh sand six times, um, can I get that same mass out? Um, the accuracy is going to be what's the actual true value. Um, and so the accuracy, we want to make sure that we've calibrated our equipment. Um, we know how to precisely do our measurements um, and so that we can get an accurate um, value for that. And so that's what the actual true value is. Um, we hear a lot of things now in terms of the accuracy of COVID tests. Um, and so for some of them, the rapid tests that you can get results back very quickly, they may not be as accurate um, as other tests and why some people might have a false positive, but when you take a more accurate test, you actually get um, the actual um, negative. Um, you'll be doing a lot with uh, your data analysis and so some of the things you might already be familiar with are calculating mean and standard deviations. Standard deviations will give us a sense of our precision um, and then we have some of these other tests to kind of ensure that we are actually representing the most accurate uh, value. Um, and so one of those is going to be the 95% confidence interval. Um, and likewise, we'll also have a t-test so we can see if we have two different methods of measuring something, are they going to be statistically similar um, or are they statistically um, dissimilar? Um, your favorite test of all will be the Grubbs test. Um, this is a statistical way to determine if you basically have bad data. Um, you might have that one plot, one point in your calibration plot that's really messing up the line, um, but you can't just throw it out. But uh, the Grubbs test allows us to analyze the data and figure out, okay, was this just a really random, um, random measurement that happened, or um, is it actually part of the set? Um, the final thing I'll mention is we'll record a lot of error in parts per thousand. Um, and so this is again why um, we'll do a little practice with significant figures um, and we'll be measuring things to four decimal places. Um, we really want 
um, our measurements, if we want them to be accurate, we want to have as many significant figures as we can. And so whereas significant figures may not have seemed important to you in the class, hopefully now in the lab, um, you can see where they become so impo important. Um, and so the parts per thousand um, is just a, another way of representing um, uh, kind of a relative or the um, absolute uncertainty. Um, and that's basically going to be the, the change, the difference in the value of the measured value versus your mean value um, divided by the mean times a thousand. And that would be an error in parts per thousand.